Uh, I don't think the cami is watching right now, but uh, I, again, this is all through Patreon. So the people who, so he requested me to do this. Uh, I will message you on Patreon once the video goes up on YouTube. So I will even do that for you if you decide to uh, subscribe to our Patreon and then uh, give me some match videos to, to um, examine. Now, Patreon does have a more expansive messaging system. So uh, if you do donate uh, over the price amount, uh, feel free to message me right away. I'll get an email about it and I'll come and take a look and uh, I'll, I'll kind of give you the rules, even though the rules aren't even really anything crazy or anything like that. So let's go. So Karen wins that one. So uh, things to learn about that match, uh, mostly kind of the same thing. Uh, the, the, the thing that disturbs me the most about the play that Sai has though, is that, like I said, like David said, everyone knows the walk back and forth now, but he's not accomplishing anything with it. He doesn't know why he's walking back and forth. You do that because you're trying to keep yourself at a odd distance from your opponent. You don't want to put yourself at a fixed distance from your opponent, which is why crouch blocking for a very long time is a bad idea because you leave yourself at a very measurable distance for your opponent. The problem is you don't want to walk back and forth an equal amount of times all the time. So if you do this, your walk back and forth is very obvious and it's not very effective. If you do this, your walk back and forth is a little more effective because now it's harder for your opponent to measure exactly where you are. So if you're just doing this back and forth all day, you're essentially standing still. There's no difference between this and standing still because the opponent knows exactly where you are. And not only that, he'll know exactly when you're going to walk forward. The reason why you do the walk back and forth a little bit is just to keep yourself hard to measure. But then the other problem too is that Sai is not hitting buttons like this. If you're walking back and forth and you're not hitting buttons, you're basically accomplishing nothing. But, uh, like I said, from this range, don't hit fierce and hard, I'm sorry, heavy punch and, uh, and heavy kick. Maybe with jabs, the fake that you're doing something, but then you have to learn to measure to get in at the right distances here so that you can start pressuring the opponent. So, I, I, Sai, you need to develop this game right here. Walk up and hit buttons at your opponent and measure the distances properly there. Uh, someone asks for a teabagging tutorial. That actually, if you follow twitch.tv slash knuckledo, I'm sure he'll have an extensive episode on that and he will teach you all the art of teabagging. So, <clears throat> okay, back to the match. So that's basically what I've learned from this second match that I've watched is that he does not know how to, uh, he's not playing the footsie game properly. So let's actually go to the last match that he has here. And um, um, so again, it's going to be against the same Karen. And the Karen comes down with Rasenha. We know that's something they're capable of. Now, I was losing to this move too because I couldn't punish this properly. I didn't know how to punish this properly. And that's my fault because even right now as I'm talking, I'm still, I can't remember what I came up with to punish this properly. But the best thing to do, go to training mode, find out how to stop this. What's the best way to punish? Because this is not safe. But I, uh, I wasn't punishing it properly. I was letting Karens get away with this. That's on you. That's on you to figure out how to, to prevent that from happening all the time. So no punish there, but then the Karen now backs off a little bit, jumping again, again using jumping medium kick, which again, I just do not recommend. Okay, I like, okay, so see, that's a decent poke sequence here, but one of the things that you have to understand about your opponent is that, um, one of the things that you have to understand about your opponent is he is a defensive Karen. So if they're a defensive Karen, after you get these moves blocked, Okay, he counter poked, but then you'll notice that Sai walks backwards and he just leaves the offensive range. He had momentum going for him. He should have kept pressuring. That was the time right there to hit um, like standing medium kick. Oh, shout outs Rdusk, thank you for the subscription. But this was the time right here to hit a standing medium kick or something or dash forward depending on how your opponent plays. Again, neither of those are the right answer, but this is a good opportunity to start applying pressure because as someone else pointed out within like 15, 20 seconds of the first round, 
This is a defensive carrot, so be a little more aggressive. Walking away at this point was a mistake because you're putting yourself now at a range where Karen has the option for the shoulder check, for Rasen Haas, for V skills, and you're in a weaker position. So you've actually walked yourself into a bad situation over here. Uh, I wonder why that didn't work. Try again, Ardusk. Try again. That should totally work. Oh, there you go. Okay. It just took a second to kick in. It just took a second to kick in to get into the database. Okay. Um, so walk back here and sure enough gets hit by the shoulder. Just like I said, putting himself at the bad range. Okay. Panic button. Panic button again. And see, the Karen has pretty decent... Okay. Okay. I like that. I like the dash forward and the throw. That's good. Okay, I like that. I like that. So that's good. But then you saw after the throw, nothing. Nothing. Now, here's the here's the secret. You should always quick rise against Kami because she really can't do anything. There's, there's really nothing she can do after a throw in the middle of the screen. Quick rise, get away. There's no way Kami can meet you unless she drills. And that's such a risk. That's such a terrible risk. No Kami should ever do that. Okay, let's go back again. Post throw. So he gets in with the V skill. That's kind of neat. Maybe that's another tactic that you can use to get in post throw. I might even steal that every once in a while because uh, it gives me uh, offense. And uh, if they don't, now that there's no wake up uppercuts, that and if they don't quick rise, okay, that was on a non quick rise. That's why it worked. That's why it worked. Okay, okay. I was like, wait a second, that's super good. Why wouldn't I do that? Because they didn't quick rise. Normally, if they had quick rise, spin knuckle is terrible. So never mind. Okay. But okay, poke, but again, you see the back off. Again, backing off again. Got some pokes, walked immediately backwards. That is something that you do not want to do. That is something that you will not want to do. Um, so here we go. Uh, our dusk, uh, yeah, we have the Patreon stuff there as well. Um, I might lower that a little bit at some point in time, so give me a second. I, I really want to talk to I really want to talk to David and stuff and see if we can lower, if he's down for lowering them out a little bit so more people can uh, donate to the Patreon and get videos uh, examined. Okay, let's keep going here. And you see, like, that Karen from across the screen was whipping lights, faking stuff, right? I don't know what the overhead for. If I was critiquing the Karen, I'd be like, I don't know why you overhead. I don't know why you didn't overhead there. That was kind of, maybe all he wanted to do was make Karen say, weak. So uh, let's keep going. Okay, see, this is what I mean. Like the Karen, what you should be paying attention to is the Karen likes this distance. This is a non-threatening range. The Karen is not scared of anything. What, what, what is the Karen worried about at this point in time? Nothing. She can do V skills or senhas, uh, shoulder checks, whatever she wants over here. Kami can do nothing because fully charged V skill is safe. Uh, shoulder check is safe. Rasenha's not safe, but uh, ca the the Kami's already proven that he can't stop that he can't stop the Rasenha. But there's nothing threatening the Karen player here. So w what is the Karen player scared of? Nothing. So the Karen player is basically controlling the match right now because at this distance, Karen has an advantage over Kami. Free, free. This is such a better distance for Karen than it is for Kami. So you do not want to be at that range. So he tries to get in with the uh, V-Skill again. So this seems to be size uh, number two method of getting in. Well, actually kind of one now because before he was jumping, now he's V-Skilling a lot. And he gets in, he gets through, it works out this time. Um, again, might be kind of a false success, although could have been a good read on the timing of the Karen's buttons. Probably not, but um, he just tried to use the V-Skill to get in there because I think he just felt like that was the thing to try. That's the one player game factor. I'm going to do this because it feels like the thing to try. Not because I had a read on my opponent. Not because I felt like the opponent was blocking too much or walking back and forth. Not because I read that the opponent has bad reactions. Because I think this is what you're supposed to do. And if you're playing fighting games that way, you're not going to get far. You really have to be cognizant of what the opponent wants to do the entire time. Okay, and he he didn't get the full combo. So he should have gotten low strong into drill, but didn't get it. 
And then again, backed off. Blocked the Rasenha, didn't have the quite proper punish, but that's just something you gotta go in trading mode and figure out. Walk back again, and then, okay, come on, yeah, keep, okay, stay in there, panic button. And again, panic button. So that's twice with the panic button, but the second time was a false success. Okay, raw drill, even though it hit, still a bad idea, still a bad idea. And again, panic button sweep. And then go, I, I do like the throw follow up, I do like the throw follow up uh, outside of meaty, but that's standard mix up right there. Okay, see, that's some decent pressure, but then he went to a, oh my god. Okay, so look, that standing light punch, crouching medium punch, like, this is good pressure. But then he went into the two panic buttons right in a row. Sweep, drill. Two panics right in a row. Gonna lose a ton of life off of that. Oops, that doesn't work. Okay, so he takes the first round there. Now, one of the things that's, um, yeah, so that was a panic button. Probably should've did low forward into drill to punish that from Karen, so. Uh, he ends up taking that round, but it was definitely some some kind of dodginess here and there. So, again, it's one of those situations where, you know, a lot of people are like, I hate losing online. And the advice a lot of people give is don't play, don't worry about losing. You know, if you play only worried about losing, you're not doing so. Like, losing is okay. You can win even if you lose. You can also lose even if you win. And in that round right there, I feel like that's kind of the case because the Karen got hit by a couple of panic button sweeps, got hit by one panic drill. Uh, those kind of things happen. So that, even though it was a round win, I, I, I consider that more of one of those, uh, um, one of those uh, false successes. I don't consider that a particularly good win situation because there was definitely a lot of unsafe things done, but because you won that round, you might go watch that round and go like, oh, okay, you know what? Uh, I did well that round, so whatever I did that round, I'm gonna keep doing. And if you have to recognize when things are unsafe and you kind of got lucky in a lot of situations. So yeah, it's very easy to win when you lose and, and also lose when you win. It's, it's very easy to have that happen. So let's keep going, round two. Right. The Karen is being a little more aggressive now, so that's my read. I would just be reading, okay, the Karen doesn't want to sit back anymore. The Karen wants to be a little more aggressive, so the Karen is being a little more aggressive. So I would try to play a little more defensive. False success, right? Wake up drill is not a thing. Doesn't even hit low. And he comboed into the super, and it worked, and it's going to do a lot of damage. But it's, it's just not what you're supposed to do. Um, wake up uppercut doesn't even work against meaty buttons, to be honest with you, unfortunately. So, uh, but it works. This works. And uh, again, not something that you should take away and be like, okay, great. That was perfect. Okay, again, same thing. Using that towards heavy kick. And um, right there. And getting counter hit afterwards. So that's something to test right there. After towards heavy kick, do you have the offense or the defense? So there you go. All right, gets thrown. And then just ate a jump in. What was he trying on that jump in that he ate? Uh, crouching, he did cr Oh no, I'm looking at the wrong side over here. He just hit a button. He tried to wake up with Stan Jab, it looked like. Um, in those situations, you just have to know to block the jump attack. You just gotta know to block, to block the jump attack. Um, dang it, why does this thing keep, uh, uh, someone type something in the chat, please. Uh, there we go, thank you. And there we go, okay. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, you just gotta block that jump attack. You gotta just, uh, you gotta take that. And he failed his combo, but there was a panic button, and... I think now even all the chat knows that that panic button was crouching heavy kick. Boom, red, crouching heavy kick. There you go. Okay, gets the combo. Oh jeez, V reversal. Yeah, that's just the weakness of Cammy's V reversal. And then uh, she just ends up getting taken down. Yep, and again, I think that was the same panic button again. Yep, 
Down back, down back heavy kick. Same panic button. What did I do? Why, why is, oh geez, do I want to know about this? Do I really want to know about this? What have I done here? What have I done here? <clears throat> but again, same. <laughs> I see what I did. <laughs> Uh, you guys, you guys are hilarious. You guys are hilarious. Um, okay, so panic button again. Now, death. So there you go. I can see right through you. All right, next round and things do not go well for our intrepid hero. But again, doing the walk back and forth, not sure what the goal of the walk back and forth is outside of I see people do this. I feel like I'm supposed to do this too. Oops, blocked one hit too early. Yeah, you gotta block both hits of that standing up. So uh, he just got hit by the second hit. You can see the down back right there. Got hit, comboed into sweep, and then hitting buttons on wake up. Learn to block. Again, in the first round of the first game we showed, I mentioned that this Karen proved that he can do meaty timings properly. So uh, he hasn't done a meaty throw yet, so it might be better just to block against this Karen a little bit more. He did not. He gets hit. Okay, didn't get completely punished. Karen standing light kick is ridiculous, okay? That just beat Cammy's button, but that's just because Karen standing light kick is super good. Okay, air to air, he wins it. Cross under, catches him with the mix-up. Guess what? One more hit. Oh, oh, wow! Okay, that was... An unfortunate scramble situation here because I think that was supposed to be a V reversal yeah yeah so what happens here is he knows he's about to get stunned he tries to re reversal the standing light kick right here unfortunately the standing light kick missed because I think the Karen thought she was gonna do a quick rise but she did a back roll so this missed and now Cammy tries to do a V reversal comes out as towards heavy kick um, but he blocks afterwards because he's scared and b keeps blocking because he knows he's going to get stunned. And then he panic buttons and the overhead from Karen goes right over it. Stun. And then... Uh, the final attack. And there it is. So, um, in my opinion, the main thing to take away from those matches, once again, is, you know, this back and forth walking back and forth. Why? Why? Why is this? So, you got, you, when you're doing this, you're not threatening Karen. What does Cammy do from this distance? Even if you threw out Hooligan into Dive Kick occasionally, maybe that would even be better. I mean, you could do Random Drill. But all of these options are terrible options because random drill misses, random drill from too close, very punishable. Hooligan is very telegraphed, so not necessarily the best option. So what your goal should be is Street Fighter is all about distances. I told you that you have to be able to measure the distance between the two players almost instantaneously. Uh, against Karen, this distance is good for Cami. This distance is bad for Cami. Don't go to this distance. Try to get to this distance or this distance. That's where you want to be with Cami. So you want to be able to poke with these buttons. Now, against Karen, it's hard. Karen's stand medium kick is better than your medium kick. Actually, they're even now. I think they're both even. They're both eight frames now. So actually, I think Karen and Cami are equal on the stand medium kick war now. So um, for sure. Uh, this distance is better, but uh, Sai, you really want to get into this range and start learning to fight from this range. Learn how to fight on the ground here with these buttons like this. You know, this is what you kind of want to learn how to do. Standing heavy kick, not so much. That's a Hail Mary crush counter that you're going for. So there you go. Um, that's, that's basically the main advice I have for him. Um, learn the offense a little bit stronger and like I said just practice your punishes practice your hit confirms and such um, but if you have any follow-up questions you know how to reach me on patreon please feel free to contact me there after you watch this episode and if you have more questions I'll be glad to answer them uh, at any point in time <clears throat> now uh, the last thing I want to address is that someone mentioned that um, uh, I should 
t teach people about maximizing your punish, maximizing your damage. And while that it is true, so in other words, let's say Ryu misses an uppercut. Um, just, just pretend he misses an uppercut and I crush counter him like this, right? Or if I crush counter him here. Like, that's... Whoops. Whoops. Like some, oh, that's not even the max punish, max punish. Um, <laughs> obviously, you can see I have not practiced this combo. There we go. So like something like that is a, is a good punish, right? But obviously, as someone who didn't practice it very much, it's actually kind of hard to do, right? Because dash and a jab, I think, is one frame, one or two frames here. So you can see I'm missing it all the time. So even though that's your max punish, you know what? Maybe you should just stick with walk up, um, crouch. Oh, no, that doesn't even hit. Okay, so you know what? When you're a beginning cami player and you crush counter them this far, just drill them. Just knock them down. This is not your maximum punish. Do medium kick drill. Do medium kick drill because it, it'll do more damage. That's not your maximum punish. But you know what? It's something, and you get something out of it. And as long as you build the muscle memory that, oh, I got a crush counter, like, oh, boom, crush counter. Oh, let me do something. Let me make sure I have the right follow-up. That's good, because you're building the mindset that you have that follow-up. And then you can keep playing the game. Trying to learn the toughest combos right from the get-go isn't the best thing to do right away. It's why I got frustrated that everybody was mad about one frame links in Street Fighter 4. If you're learning Street Fighter 4, you shouldn't be trying to learn one frame links, but everyone wanted to do one frame links right at the beginning. And that's just a bad mentality. Like learn the simple things first before you start trying to learn the one frame links and things like that. So if this is all you're doing for now, don't consider yourself as Man, I'm not optimizing my combo, whatever, blah, blah, that's fine. Don't even worry about it. Because what you really want to work on is your footsie game. You want to work on your jump bait games. You want to learn on your meaty timing games and stuff like this. So if this is the best that you get, and then you want to get, like, for example, a dash and do medium punch. Yeah, like that. So if that's the best that you get, that's fine. That's fine. You don't need to learn the high damage combo right now. You really don't. Save that for another time. Save that for another time. Okay, that doesn't work on you. Save that for another time. You don't have to always do these maximum super high level combos. Like even though you see top players do that, that's like basically seeing LeBron James do a slam dunk. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go to the basketball court and I'm gonna learn to slam dunk. Well, I mean, Wait, wait until you like work out, get to the point where you can jump high enough to slam dunk and like practice that. Maybe you're not even tall enough to do it. I've seen plenty of players who can win tournament matches without optimizing their combos all the time. In fact, even someone like Filipino Champ in Marvel doesn't do that. He does the combos that are the easiest to do because um, they're consistent and he makes sure that he doesn't drop them. So uh, yeah, Drunk Daigo uh, says it really well. Learn to walk before you try to run. Thug Bear also says it, don't copy what players do get, well, don't, yeah, don't copy what those pros are doing, you know, do it yourself and, and learn it properly. So I just totally butchered what he said. <laughs> Sorry, Thug Bear, I completely ruined that. Anyways, um, that's the one last thing I wanted to mention. So don't always necessarily try to always get your max damage combos. Plus, sometimes you want to save meter because honestly, like, that's the max damage combo right there, but that spends two bars. So sometimes you're like, ah, oh, you know what? I don't want to spend that meter. So you want to do something else. So uh, that's my, uh, I guess that'll be it for my lesson for today. Um, I need to use that more. Yeah, cause see, cause even when you do this like this, you get no meaties, but in the middle of the screen, if you do this, even on quick rise, you get meaties. Can they back roll off of that? Because if they can't back roll off of that, I need to be doing this all the time. Oh, they can't back roll off of that. Why am I not ending combos in that? Holy crap, that's super good. That's really good. 
Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, I'm going to remember that for next time I play online. Uh, but that's the lesson for the day. That's the lessons for today. So uh, here we go. Um, just to sum up for a little bit, if you guys enjoyed this and you guys appreciate the content and everything, uh, I have donation links at the bottom of the screen right over here. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait, I can do this too. I've got some donation links. Uh, where is it? Uh, there we are. Okay, so the donation links are down there, so you can donate there. Also, you'll see in the Patreon, right there, Patreon, as well as you can sub to the channel. And uh, I mentioned, uh, you'll see in the in the chat every once in a while, the Moobot mentions it. If you guys have uh, Amazon Prime and uh, you want to support our channel for basically no cost on your part, uh, every Amazon Prime, every every Amazon .com Prime account comes with a free monthly subscription to a Twitch channel. You have to manually renew it every month, but it costs nothing on your part. You just have to link your accounts together. Amazon owns Twitch. So uh, just link your accounts together, use your subscription for Ultra Chen TV. Uh, we would super appreciate it very, very, very much. Um, it helps me as well because uh, this is now my full-time job. It is also Steve and Steve's full-time job, so um, any donation will help. And again, if you would like me to um, analyze one of your videos, um, we have it as a Patreon goal right now. So if you donate a certain amount to Patreon, uh, we will have it. I, I can I will message you online. And I have a bunch of people I owe messages to, so I will take care of that uh, soon. But um, you can donate to Patreon. I will analyze your videos for you just like I did here. I promise it won't take this long. So poor size got like five hours of videos to watch and stuff but because this was the inaugural episode but um if you want me to analyze it again the video that i analyze it's nice if it is your own video so i can help you out but if there's another match that you just think is super cool that you really really want me to analyze like oh my god daigo infiltration had this ridiculous match or if you're playing against one of your friends and you are having trouble teaching your friend and so you just give me the video and as a favor to your friend, like, please analyze this and try to point out bad habits that my friend is doing, etc., etc. Um, thanks, Hanzo. I'm, I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that information. But, um, yeah, uh, again, just if you donate a on Patreon, I'll send you a message. I'll give you the rules and all this stuff like that. There's nothing really crazy and there is the option to go incognito if you want and such like that. Uh, C. Chun asks, have we thought about making t-shirts or anything like that? 100% yes. Um, we're waiting on something before we actually create any sort of paraphernalia, but that is something that is definitely coming in the future. So uh, there you go. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope this was educational. Sorry. I mean, like literally I had three matches that were two minutes each. I did not think it was going to take four hours, but hopefully uh, it all made sense. It was educational. Hopefully um, things work out uh, really well. Um, uh, my collectibles, uh, Eli Hendricks, I've got a ton. I've got a ton. So maybe one of these days I'll, I'll have to try to do something to, to show you. <laughs> But uh, there you go. Thank you guys for tuning in for the inaugural episode of The Mind's Eye, which I named after Ryu's uh, V-Skill, uh, the parry, because I just thought that was appropriate. So um, in any case, uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, keep an eye here. Follow us, at least. That doesn't cost any money. Follow us here on Ultra Chen TV. Uh, I've also been streaming random games this weekend. I'll probably go live with Metal Gear maybe a couple of times. Uh, I might even play Metal Gear tonight. I'm not sure because I really need to pick that game up again and get back to it. So, you know, I'm still doing a lot of different things like that. So if you uh, just give us a follow and give uh, at Jay Chenzor. I'm sorry, follow twitch.tv slash Jay Chenzor as well because I'll stream on both channels from time to time. And uh, follow us on Twitter at Ultra TV and follow me on Twitter at Jay Chenzor. All right. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. And I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.